go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Catching Cars. My name is Isaiah, and this right here is the Kedar test vehicle today. Thanks to Drive, we have this 2022 Hyundai Ioniq plug-in hybrid. So this one is the plug-in hybrid version. They also have a full electric version of this. Either way, we're gonna go ahead and take this out on the Autobahn, see how it goes, and then I'm gonna come back and tell you guys my impressions of it. Before we get going, be sure to subscribe to Catching Cars. And we're already on the Autobahn. Let's go ahead and get that acceleration run going. Right, so the top speed on this Hyundai Ionic plug-in hybrid is 187 kilometers an hour on the speedo. It's limited to that speed. Um, we did zero to 100 kilometers an hour. You saw it there. It has decent pickup when you put it in sports mode. There's a really big difference between sports mode and drive. Uh, in drive mode, it's really just super calm and I guess lethargic and it just really doesn't want to do anything. And then it finally kicks down and now it's going. Um, but in sport mode, it's actually pretty eager to downshift and actually picks up quite well um, now it's no sports car obviously 141 ps in this um, and uh, yeah that's the com combined uh, horsepower output between the electric motor and the uh, internal combustion engine so it's definitely no sports car but it is a lot sportier than the prius i've heard now i haven't driven the prius yet myself uh, but it doesn't feel bad it feels like a regular car um, with a little bit of electric uh, assistance i guess um, speaking of assistance no button here for the assistance systems again like i said we need a button here in the middle to just turn them off very annoying um, however it is uh, controlled through the steering wheel i believe uh, i think that's the only way to do it so you go here yeah you can go click this button and you go to driver assistance and then you can turn it off here um, so that is better than it being hidden inside this screen only however this is still too complicated uh, we just need a button there to turn everything off and that would make it a lot easier lane assist you can turn off here on the side with a button but that's the only assistance feature you can turn off there so overall my impressions of this is it's just a really good car um, and that's all it is it's a basic commuter car it's not very sporty but it's not too boring either it is very good on fuel um, you can even floor this thing I've been driving it pretty fast lately and um, I've been getting some really really good fuel economy so now even with that acceleration run we just had in let me double check what the fuel economy is uh, right now we're averaging 6.2 liters per 100 kilometers and I've been flooring this thing a lot lately uh, in the past couple of hours uh, just driving it. So that average is with a lot of uh, acceleration runs, top speed runs, and uh, just overall fast driving on the Autobahn mostly. Um, so yeah, this thing is very good on fuel. It's a great commuter car. Of course, it's nothing special. Uh, the design is, I believe, better than the Prius. However, it's nothing, nothing really, I guess, special or nice to look at. Um, but overall, it's a really nice vehicle and I can definitely recommend it, especially for people that just want to get from A to B and you know they don't want a diesel over here in europe um, and they don't want a fully electric vehicle this thing is really good on fuel and um, it really gets the job done so that'll be it for today guys be sure to subscribe to catching cars um, like the video